Who doesn't love dinosaurs? Cause this guy loves them. Whenever I think of the word prehistoric, my mind instantly goes to dinosaurs, but actually the prehistory age covered a pretty massive time period. The prehistoric age lasted from 2.5 million years ago to 1200 BC and was split up into three different eras. The Stone Age, the Bronze Age, and the Iron Age. So that leaves room for plenty of discoveries, which means they aren't all just dinosaur bones we've been digging up. Hey everyone, Dewey Stewart back and ready to give you a wicked video today. Today we are counting down the top 10 mysterious discoveries from the prehistoric area. So grab your chisel, brush, hammer and wicked cool archaeologist hat and let's get to it. Starting us off in our top 10 spot we have apple fossils. Yeah how cool is that? Fossils of modern day fruit. Apple specimens were found in a neolithic site in Switzerland and they date all the way back to 3160 BC. Archaeologists found an apple seed from the first millennium BC in the Tian Shan mountain in Kazakhstan and this is where it is believed that the modern fruit that we all know and love originated. But how did they become famous all around the world and the superfruit that sparked the saying an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Well, archaeobotanist Robert Spangler, not Egon, from the Max Planck Institute for the Science of Human History, combined the apple fossil and other archaeological evidence with genetic studies, comparing our modern day apple to the original apple. He concluded that early human civilizations, just like today and other animals, spread apple seeds all around to continue to grow the delicious fruit. So there you go. Early humans, I thank you for apples, apple juice, and most importantly, apple pie. Coming in at number 9, we have the Swimming Spinosaurus. For years and years, the dangerous and mean looking Spinosaurus was believed to have been able to swim by archaeologists and scientists, but they never had any hard proof, because there weren't enough fossils to prove this hypothesis. And you know what? The only almost full specimen that humans found was destroyed during a bombing raid in the Second World War. But just recently, scientists analyzed the ancient beast's tail bones and discovered that its tail was actually broad and paddle-like according to the journal Nature. They had the perfect tails for swimming. A paleontologist at the University of Detroit Mercy said that this discovery is the nail in the coffin for the idea that non-avian dinosaurs never invaded the aquatic realm. This dinosaur was actively pursuing prey in the water column and not just standing in shallow waters waiting for fish to swim by. Damn, that's pretty cool. Coming in at number 8 we have an ancient Neanderthal string. <laughs> oh. Cool. Back in December of 2020, scientists discovered the oldest known direct evidence of fiber technology using natural fibers to create yarn. This might not seem like a crazy huge discovery, but it's actually pretty big. Discoveries like these help us understand just how high the cognitive abilities were of the Neanderthals and what their abilities were during the Neopaleolithic age. Bruce Hardy and colleagues discovered the string in Abri du Maras, France, and date it back to 41,000 to 52,000 years ago. It was only six millimeters long and consisted of three bundles of fiber that most likely can consisted from the inner bark of non-flowering trees, such as conifer. It would have taken great understanding of not only the use of these fabrics, but also the growing patterns of these trees that they would source the materials from. They also believe that these Neanderthals needed to have a decent understanding of mathematical concepts and basic numeracy skills to create bundles of fibers. So Neanderthals may have been smarter than what we have been giving them credit for, so I'm sorry guys. Coming in at our number 7 spot, we have migrating duck dinosaurs. Say what? The dinosaur called Asnabia odysseus was recently found in an area of the world where it should not have been. Not the actual dinosaur though, just a fossil. Dang it. Fossils of the old large duck dinosaur were unearthed in Morocco just last year. Nicholas Longrich, a paleontologist at the University of Bath, said it was completely out of place, like finding a kangaroo in Scotland. These duckbills evolved in North America and eventually migrated to South America, Asia, and Europe. But Africa was of course an island continent 66 million years ago during the period that this dinosaur was alive. So how exactly did it get there? Did it just float its way there or could it swim? I highly doubt this swimming theory because these guys had arms relatively close to the T-Rex which means they were basically useless. But who knows, maybe I'm just underestimating these prehistoric beasts like I underestimated the Neanderthals too. Coming in at number 6 we have a Neolithic structure. Archaeologists from the University of Bradford discovered a large prehistoric site at the Durrington Walls near Stonehenge in England just last year. The archaeologists found a series of Neolithic shafts that date around 2500 BC and stretch for 2 kilometers around the Durrington Walls and Woodhenge monuments. The shafts were 10 meters in diameter and reached a depth of 5 meters. Researchers and archaeologists believe that these large and mysterious shafts were used as a boundary and a way to guide worshippers to the monuments. The team discovered 20 shafts and originally believed them to be the natural features and just hollows and chalk, but thanks to a large geophysical study, the pattern was determined over the large landscape and researchers were able to connect the dots. Stonehenge has been a site of many explorations for years and years with much of its purpose and history still up for debate. So anything that helps bring more information to this ancient site is always welcome to me. Coming in at our 
halfway point at number five, we have a Jurassic Park creature in amber. Jurassic Park is finally going to be real, guys, and as much as I love that, I also am incredibly terrified because I have seen all of those movies, and it never ends well. Why do we keep doing it? But luckily for me and all of you, I'm just kidding. But a creature was found in amber just like the mosquito in the movies. A 99 million year old piece of amber from Myanmar was found containing what was believed to be one of the smallest dinosaurs ever. Well, now it's believed to just be a lizard, but a weird one at that. This weird creature is bird-like in appearance and has 100 razor sharp teeth and weighs just 0.7 ounces. Now, no matter what the creature inside is, this is a wicked cool discovery of a prehistoric animal that might just lead to our very own Jurassic Park. Or maybe not, but never say never. Coming in at our number four spot, we have Big Game Female Hunters. Most historians and scientists agreed that Big Game Hunters way, way back in time were all men. But guess what? They might be wrong. A 9,000 year old female hunter burial ground was found in the Andes Mountains in South America. Other than the female humans, they also found a hunting toolkit with projectile points and animal processing tools. Usually any objects buried with humans at the time would be objects that accompanied the deceased for most of their life. Kind of like super sentimental personal belongings. It was confirmed that the bodies found were indeed female after analyzing the dental protein in the bones that they found. Later throughout North and South America, researchers found 429 individuals from 100 107 different sites. Out of those individuals, 27 were associated with big game hunting, and out of those 27, 11 were female and 15 were male. So it sounds like things might have been more equal between men and women back in the day. At least way more than what we thought. So when did this sex inequality start? Well, it probably wasn't with the mean big game women hunters, that's for sure. Starting us off in our top three, at number three, we have the Reaper of Death also known as the T-Rex's cousin. And guess what? This beast is Canadian. This dinosaur is 79.5 million years old and is the oldest named Tyrannosaurus on record from North America. It is also the first newly named Tyrannosaur from Canada in the last 50 years. Go us. Jared Voris, a paleontology student at the University of Alberta and lead researcher of the study said, it definitely would have been quite the imposing animal, roughly eight feet tall at the hips. The reaper had these unique vertical ridges that ran from its eyes to its upper snout and scientists are aren't exactly sure why this dino had these ridges, but if you were its prey, then it was probably one of the last things you ever saw in your life. And you know what? I would really appreciate if this is what Canada became known for instead of its manners, maple syrup, beavers, and how we talk when we're oot in a boot. I mean, we're nasty just like the rest of the world too, okay? Come on. Sorry. Coming in at number two, we have a giant woolly mammoth discovery. Back in 2020, archaeologists discovered a giant ice age structure built from the remains of at least 60 mammoths at the Kostenki Borshevo Archaeological Complex. The giant structure was in a circular shape and had a diameter of 12.5 meters and was built around 25,000 years ago. That was at the peak of the ice age. It was also when communities were mostly mobile hunter gatherers. This makes the monument one of the oldest known mammoth bone structures ever in comparison to the other structures that have been found and that date back to only 22,000 years ago. You know, only 22,000. It's basically an infant. There was a total of 51 lower jaws and 64 individual mammoth skulls that were used to construct the walls of the 30 by 30 feet structure. Let me emphasize here folks, these bones are incredibly dense and heavy, which means building these structures would have been super tiresome and strenuous. So give it up for my ice peeps, but also for the mammoths. Thank you for the shelter. And finally, coming in at number one, we have the missing link. Just recently in June of this year, researchers from the Tel Aviv University and the Hebrew University University of Jerusalem identified a new type of human ancestor at the Nesher Ramla site. These human remains date back to 140 to 120,000 years ago. Researchers named this species the Nesher Ramla homotype. They named it this because of its obvious location, but also because they believe this was one species that mated with the Neanderthals and archaic Homo species, which then led to the development of us Homo sapiens. This species of humanoids were very different from us nowadays. They had a completely different skull structure, no chin, and very large teeth. And as I said earlier, scientists Scientists believe these guys were the missing links in human evolution. It also helps us understand the migration of our early ancestors, which is always a fascinating question to answer. Just where did we come from? And once we were here, how did we get here? Who knows? Anyway, there you have it. That has been our top 10 mysterious discoveries from the prehistoric era. What did you think? Were you hoping for more dinosaurs or more human discoveries? Honestly, I love me some dinosaur knowledge and discoveries and anything that brings about the possibility of an actual Jurassic Park is always welcome by me. Well, of course, with a little hesitancy, if we could bring back all the herbivore dinosaurs, then I say let's do it. Sorry, Reaper of Death, your dangerous Canadian eye ridges are just too much for me. So take off, eh, you hoser? Anyway, let me know what you thought down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I've been your host, Dewey Stewart. I will see you all back here very soon. And until next time, be good to yourself, friends. Bye bye, and I'm gonna go deal with this noise. <clears throat>
Who doesn't love dinosaurs? Cause this guy does. Oh no, I don't even like that. First line in. Is that, is that a problem? We're doing a lot of maintenance right now in the building. And it's a pain. But thanks to those guys. I think that brings about the possibility. It's too loud, right? It's quieter in here though. It was really loud at my desk. <laughs> it's exactly the scene from Austin Powers you were talking about.